In this video, we're going to walk through an example of testing out two different partition strategies against one another. First off, why do we want to test partition strategies against one another? That goes back to the warning from the last video, which is partitioning is very hard to change. Partitioning is the way we lay out data and the way we create files in HDFS. So if we were to change a partition strategy once we have data in a table, we actually need to rewrite all of the data in that table. Now there's a case where we can remove the lowest layer of partitions and move all of those files into the directory above, but that's not a really great case because generally that trick doesn't work and we still have a lot of files that are smaller than they need to be. So when you think about changing partitioning, think about rewriting all of the data. And since we're working with Hadoop and inherently we wanna work with very large data sets, that becomes a big pain. So we wanna go through this exercise of figuring out in advance what the best solution for our application is going to be at the scale that our application is going to run at. Now we've talked in previous videos about how to load data into Hadoop so that all of our testing is done in parallel. What we're going to do today is exercise that strategy so we can take a look at how queries perform under two different partition strategies. This can't really be done without knowing what it is we're going to be testing. So we need to have accurate sample queries that represent the workloads that we're going to be running on the data when our application is in production. Here, I've listed two. First off, we're still working with our movie ratings data set. We need the current average rating for every single movie in that data set. We need this information to show users the current rating of a movie that we're representing on a web page or trying to sell or something like that. Now, this is surprisingly difficult to calculate because we get all of the ratings data in as immutable facts. So person A rated movie M at some time three. Well, what happens is if that user changes their rating, we get another immutable fact. So person A has now rated movie M twice. So calculating the average rating is actually pretty complex because we have to deduplicate and use just the latest rating for any movie for an individual user. Now, we're not actually going to calculate that today. What we are going to do is just use a representative query in Hive. That's going to be a query where we select the movie ID and the average rating overall, knowing that we'll have to insert some MapReduce job later to calculate the actual value. So what we're interested in Hive here for is just as a stand-in for a MapReduce job that's going to do something a bit more complicated than Hive. The second sample query that we're going to take a look at is getting all of a movie's ratings over time. This is a great query to use Impala for because we're zeroing in on just one movie and we're rolling up each month's worth of ratings in order to view how a movie's ratings have evolved over time. This is to find movies that were maybe initially popular but didn't really hold up over time. These two queries give us something to balance. So we know we're going to be calculating something fairly complex over the entire data set, and we know we're going to be doing something that we want to happen very quickly. An analyst probably doesn't want to wait two minutes to get the results of their time series of ratings back from the data set. These queries give us two use cases that are kind of difficult to balance and different. In the one case, we're calculating something fairly complex over the entire data set in Hive, and in the other, we want very quick access to interesting data through Impala. Next, let's take a look at the two different partition strategies we're gonna be comparing. The first is the partition strategy that we've looked at thus far. So we have a ratings data set that's partitioned into years, and each year is partitioned into months. Now notice that in this partition strategy, all of the movie data is jumbled together by month. So all of the ratings that happened in December of 2014 are in the same folder for all of the movies that were rated in December 2014. That makes it really difficult for us to find a time series over the entire 20 year span of the data set for one particular movie. We would have to go over the entire data set. That's just a consequence of having easy access to a particular month's data, which is useful in and of itself. But for our query that we're trying to optimize today, it doesn't really help us. So option two is something that addresses that situation. Option two is to add a movie ID hash into the months. Now, let me explain what I mean by movie ID hash instead of just movie ID. If we take all of the movie IDs, we have some 200,000 different movies. 
And if we were to have all of the ratings for a particular movie in its own folder in a given month, we would have roughly on the order of 200,000, say 100,000 folders in each month directory. That's dividing this data into way too many small pieces. And what we would end up with is a problem for Hadoop to keep track of all of those files at once and a real problem for our application, which has to find the file, request it, open a new connection to where it's stored and so on. There's overhead associated with reading an individual file that you usually don't notice. But in this case, where we would be talking 20 years times 12 months times 100,000 movies, it would get really, really taxing. So instead of having a layer that is just movie ID, we can still add a layer that uses the movie ID, but groups them together in a way that we search through more data than we need, but we're not hitting the small files problem. And that is to hash, or really just mod, the movie ID by some number. In this case, I've chosen 32. So you see November, December, January, February all have 0, 1, 2, and so on, all the way up to 31 directories. So that's simply taking the movie ID, modding it by 32, and sticking it in a partition there. Now that we've outlined the partition strategies, let's actually go run these tests. I'm going to drop over to a terminal. Here we go. Now the data that we've been working with up to this point is already in the first partition strategy, and that is partitioned by year and month. What we need to do is create a second table that's partitioned by the hash of this ID. So we're going to start off by creating that partition strategy and passing it to create a table to Kite. Kite has, once again, as we saw earlier, a partition config command to help us create the JSON configuration file. So I'm going to type Kite dataset partition config. We're going to take the timestamp year, the timestamp month, and then the movie ID hash, and that is going to be 32 buckets. Now let's just run that and take a look, and it's going to tell me it wants the schema so it can verify that those fields exist. So we'll give it a rating.avsc. Okay, and it's created this partition strategy for us that takes the timestamps year, the timestamps month, and then the movie ID hashes it and puts it into 32 buckets. Now I need to output this to a file, so we'll call it year month id.json. And I also need to edit this slightly. And that's because of a current bug in Hive that I've been hitting. Let's take a look at year month JSON. Hive considers all of its column names to be case insensitive. So Hive, when it generates what this name should be, thinks it should be movie ID hash with a lowercase i. So I'm just going to make Hive happy by replacing that capital I with an underscore and a lowercase i. And then we can run kite dataset create ratings by ID. Give it the rating.avsc schema and the year month id.json file. And this is really dash dash schema and dash dash partition by options. I'm just using a short form here to create that data set. Now I hit control C because I've already done that and filled it with data so that we don't have to wait during this movie. Now I would fill it with data by simply running kite dataset copy from ratings to ratings by ID. I've already done this, so we don't have to wait on the job to happen. But all we're saying is copy in parallel from my ratings data set into my new ratings by ID data set. And Kite will handle extracting the data from each record, figuring out what partition it needs to be in, and minimizing the number of files in those partitions to give us a really good layout for our data for this test. And just to say it one last time, these are actually running in parallel, the copy. So it would be very quick on a cluster, and it scales with the number of nodes that you have. Next, what we want to do is start running a couple queries to get a feel for how these two different partition strategies compare. I'm going to start off in Impala. So I'm going to run Impala shell dash I blue three, where one of my Impala nodes is running. And now I can say invalidate metadata to pick up the changes from the Hive meta store before it times out, and then show tables. And there we have it. I have a ratings by ID table. Well, let's run one of those queries that we were talking about. We're going to run number two from this slide. Need to look at a movie's ratings over time. So we're going to select the year, the month, and the average of the ratings for that month for a particular ID. So let's do this. Let's say select year, month, average rating from ratings, group by year, month, order by year, and month. 
So we want the year, the month, and the average from the ratings table. We're grouping them together by year and month, and that's how we're going to calculate the average. And we want to order by year and month so they're not jumbled together. Now the one thing that is missing here is our where clause. So where movie ID equals 588. So this is simulating just one query for a single movie. Again, we don't want to calculate the time series or the averages for each month for all of the movies. That would be pretty expensive. We're zeroing in on the use case where we want it just for one or two movies at a time. So here I've selected a movie at random, which happens to be 1992's Aladdin, which I think we've probably all seen. There we go. We can see the ratings for 2014 start off at 4.1 then immediately go down in February to a 3.4, up to 3.65, back up to 4. And we can see that this is actually a pretty interesting data set because it's a very popular movie, Disney's Aladdin, and it's getting wildly different reviews in these months. So this gives us a baseline for how fast it's going to be because we've done this on our ratings table. That completed in 2.3 seconds. Let's change this to select from ratings by ID and see what happens. Already, it seems to be taking a long time. Ah, there we go. We get the same results. So looking at 2014 and January, we start off with 4.1, go down to 3.4. So the data looks correct, but this took 10 seconds instead of two and a half seconds. So what is going on here? Well, remember in one of the previous videos, I warned that a lot of the partitioning is left up to you, the user. And that's what's happening in this case. Although we are selecting from a partitioned table, we're really not using that partition because we haven't given Impala any information about how to use those partitions. So we just need to add something to the where clause to tell it how to interpret the partition. So we're going to say where movie ID hash equals 588 mod 32. Now we see that happens a lot more quickly. And in fact, it's a full second faster than queries on our original table, which is great. If we were just optimizing this for analysts, we'd have a clear winner, but we're not. We're still optimizing this for two use cases at once. Let's go back and check that out. We have the current average rating, which we're going to calculate with Hive. So let's drop into a Hive shell and compare the two. The query that we're using to be representative of the more complex figuring out the last known rating for each user is just to calculate the movie ID and the average rating. So we're going to select movie ID average of rating from ratings, nowhere clause, we're just going to do this for everything in the data set, and we're going to group by movie ID, and each group is going to have its rating average. We'll run that really quick. Well, not really quick, it's going to take about two minutes. Okay, and there we have it, 26,000 results. We don't really care what the results say at this point. What we're interested in is that it took 54 seconds to happen. So let's try the same thing on the ratings by ID table. Now in Impala, we had to add something special in order to have this go faster. So we could add group by movie ID hash. There's probably little reason for this to help because the main cause of this query to take a long time is the number of tasks, which is the number of files, and how long it takes to set up each stage and sort of the overhead of MapReduce. So I'm going to add it just in case it helps, but I don't really think it will. Now already we can see this is taking a lot longer to plan and even get to the job startup phase, which is not a great sign. Okay, finally launching our job, saying that we might want to do some tuning. And that's true, we might want to do some tuning, and you can certainly tune these queries while you're doing testing. I don't think it's very likely that we would need to tune these particular queries. Now, we are only using one mapper for both queries, so it's a little unfair. We could also say that four mappers or really taking advantage of the entire cluster would be better, but we can also say that since we're only using one mapper for both queries, we don't really need to do that adjustment. It may be half or a quarter as long if we were running these queries with more mappers, but the same effect is going to be obvious here. And that is the queries on the data that's broken down by ID hash just take way longer. So here we can see we've already taken a very long time to get to this point, and we're only 8% done with the map. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. We can pretty much see here that this query is much, much slower. But I've run it through, and it takes about 10 minutes to complete.
So one minute versus 10 minutes, it wouldn't really matter if we were using four mappers. We have a big problem here. And that big problem arises from the fact that we're just going over a lot of small files. So let's take a look at how small the files actually are in the two data sets. LS, user, hive, warehouse, ratings, year equals 2015, month equals 03, and we'll see how large the file is in the first. And it looks like it's less than a megabyte, but not too bad. Still well under what we would probably want in a production application. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now let's take a look at ratings by ID and dive into just one of the random directories, movie ID hash equals, say, 8. And here, looks like the file is less than 34k. So the real bottleneck in our Hive query was just opening, closing, and dealing with the overhead of so many files. Now that we have an idea of what's going on and why, let's take a look at what we should choose. On the one hand, our Impala query that analysts are going to be waiting at their desks to see data return from goes from 2.3 seconds down to about 1.3 seconds. So we save one second on every query that someone's probably looking at. On the other hand, our regular job to compute the average rating for all of the movies is going to take about 10 times longer. Maybe we can get that down by tweaking the query a bit, but still, 10 times is a very long time. Now, one of the nice things is that you have the ability to choose what is more important. Are you going to get a ton of analyst complaints if it takes two seconds? Or is it going to be a very large problem if it takes days and days to compute all of these averages in your data center? For this particular application, I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't mind waiting the extra second to get this time series. So I think I'm going to stick with just the regular ratings data as we've structured it so far. When you're running these tests for your customers, typically you'll have external requirements and SLAs that you might need to meet that make you choose different things. The important thing is knowing from tests and data how to structure your data in advance so that you're not surprised by these things in production. And that concludes our quick section on testing different partition strategies against one another. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Training Video YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.